It'll through. travel, but a lot of times it's just a fridge directly under the bar, and the kegs are right there. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's where it is. And, you know, it's a lot of work lugging those things around. I mean, part of the, one of the hats I used to wear was delivering beer on top of everything else, you know, and I, you know, dropped a few kegs down the stairs unintentionally, you know, <laughs> get away from you. They're heavy little buggers. So, yeah. Um, do you have a good glass door person to replace the glass doors? <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, uh, what, a drywall guy. That's yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, they're heavy. heavy. Yeah. But, you know, you get good muscles. You know? And what other hats have you worn over the years? Bookkeeping. I was a terrible bookkeeper. Really? Yeah. Um, part of the story is when we started, we could not afford a bookkeeper. Yeah. And, and I went to George Brown Night School. Yes. And I took a, an accounting course. Of course. And I learned uh, the joke, and I learned just enough to really screw things up. Yes. <laughs> Debits and credits. And, uh, you know, QuickBooks, you know, it was great. You go to Staples. And yeah, you was... have your FIFO and LIFO, from what I remember. Yeah, that's well. right. That yeah. Right? Yeah, I, that I learned that first later. Out, yeah, okay. I'm like, what are all these exactly. acronyms? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, I set up QuickBooks, and, yeah. you know, how hard can this be? And, uh, you know, I really did quite a and number. Okay. But, yeah. but, you know, it, that's why you hire someone else when you make money a little bit down the road to fix you up. To clean up your you mess. clean up your mess and you get sorted out. So that happened. hat went whoosh, out yeah. the window. But I found... Uh, but you'd be so... Like, I, I've met a lot of entrepreneurs over the, the years and on the show as well. And that happens regularly. It's not like people get into things that they might not have the experience and they try and do it. And then if they figure that the hat doesn't fit, don't wear it. And they move it. on to the next thing and but, they hire someone else for it when they can. But, the, but I think what you have to take away from that is understanding every component of your business. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to be a brewer or a shoemaker, but you have to understand the process from start to finish, how it's made. So you can understand your costs. Why am I spending too much in this respect or something? It's, it's very important to understand every component of what you're doing. Um, you know, whether or not it's going to be your focus, it's just having a handle on it. It's so important. And earlier on uh, in the break, you were talking a little bit about uh, the Earth Day stuff that yes. you were doing. Tell me a little bit about that. I always like the charitable component. Yes, of that as oh, well. absolutely. And, and that's sort of a tie-in to talking about getting involved with the community. We are partners with Earth Day Canada, yeah. uh, who people may not realize is an organization based in Canada. It's Earth Day is a day, but here it's actually an organization that does a lot of work on an annual basis. It's even, your website's even up. I, I just hey, Earth Day. Yeah, Earth there Day. It's on the screen on the left. Yeah. Pint for the Planet. That's what we call it. At 50 cents at participating licensees, 50 cents are donated to Earth Day. That's awesome. From now, what well, started at Earth Hour all the way up till um, Earth Day. Yeah. Um, and it's also at the LCBO whenever you buy a six pack, we're contributing towards Earth Day. But what does that mean? It means that, well, for starters, they have a program called Hometown Heroes. Mm -hmm. And it's for basically recognizing and rewarding individuals, uh, organizations, and small businesses who are nominated because of the work they're doing in their Canadian community. And uh, boy, you meet people who are doing some amazing work with recycling, just the developing technologies, whether it's wind, renewable power, really remarkable stuff. And these are our neighbors, and they need to be recognized, whether mm -hmm. it's with some monetary thing or somehow helping them continue what they're doing, because it's helping all of us. But Earth Day Canada, is also uh, year-round helping students. They have the best program in Canada, educating students on how they can you know, mitigate their impact on the environment. So I'm a big fan of what they're doing. Uh, we just gelled, and it just, it's taken off. So this is our third year doing it. Last year, we raised $85,000. We're shooting for 100 grand. And again, it's, it's a lot of beer, too. It is a lot yeah, of beer, which is great. but it's national now, too. For sure, so yeah. People were turning their lights off with us you know, from BC to Ontario. And that's what kicked off the whole program. So it goes for a few more weeks. And it's exciting to see people get jazzed up about the environment. What Either side of the argument, whatever it is, renewable power, whatever, you know, we're trying to take a stand. But it's not a political one. It's really yeah. just about we all need to do something together, yeah. wherever you stand on it. Because it's, it, you know, it's our planet, and we need to do something. Well, I can tell you're passionate about it. You have, you've got, you I'm know, angry. Yeah, 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 you're angry. <laughs> you want to tell it? Yeah. No, that's great, though, because a lot of people, um, the, a lot of companies I know is often um, don't actually get involved all the way with the charity yeah. or the organizations that they're supporting. And, and like I've, when it, for my charity stuff, I have great supporters that totally jump right in. It makes the world a difference for the organizations that it benefits. Absolutely. Uh, to actually fully have your support and you, you get what they're up to. Well, just dropping off beer is great. Yeah. And they certainly appreciate it when they're doing fundraisers and helping that respect. But if you could take it a step further, and I have to say social media has really help to make it simple, yeah. you know, um, because you could get the message out very quickly and inexpensively and repeat it often. So people understand that, you know. How, how's that changed your company in the last 10 years? Well, I am the keeper of the Twitter. So people want to tweet you. Well, I'm not tweeting right now. I'm kind of getting shaky. <laughs> yeah. uh, hopefully people are watching the, the store while I'm out. But uh, 
I went kicking and screaming. Yeah. I did not like it. I, at first, to be completely honest, I didn't think there was a need to find out when people were constantly having a, a cappuccino, because mm -hmm. that's all I understood. But as I really started delving into it, I realized what a powerful tool it was mm -hmm. for whatever message you want to convey. And if your message is genuine and honest, and you're just speaking with your voice, you're not putting on some kind of act, um, people seem to appreciate it. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say between Facebook and Twitter and all, and now Google Plus. I am Google it's Plus. Google Plus. There's also Keek. It's a new startup from What's Toronto. That? Really? 36-second video tweets. They just hit 25 that? million users. It's been absolutely crazy. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, so you got, you're going to have like 14 different things going if you... Talk about hats, right? I know, seriously. Yeah. That's another one to add to the collection yeah, as well. No, I, I certainly want to share the load a little bit, but it, it's been fun because you're talking to your fans, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. and when we, we're going to be taking another quick break, but um, when we come back, can we get into how organic, what, yeah. what organic means for a beer? I'll get passionate again. You'll get passionate. I will. I will. So, so, so definitely stick, a, stick around. There's lots more to come uh, with Steve Abrams, co-founder of Mill Street Brewery, when we return. So definitely call us, 416-446-7090. Stick around. Lots more to come here on Toronto Speaks Entrepreneurship. Back on Toronto Speaks Entrepreneurship, I would like to uh, also thank His Excellency, the Governor General of Canada, for presenting me with that award that you just saw. It's the Caring Canadian Award. I get a cool pin out of it. I get to wear it around. So, it's a lot. Thank you very much. I appreciate. Awesome. It. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of fun, and uh, it's partially from the stuff that I've done here uh, at Rogers, and also for the charitable work through a charity I co-founded called Skate to Great. So uh, yeah, thank you to everyone who put on that ceremony. Yeah, so we're back awesome. with Steve Abrams, who's the co-founder um, of Mill Street <laughs> Brewery. And uh, we always want to welcome your calls. So uh, you can definitely get in touch with us a few ways. 416-446-7090 is the number to reach us. You can tweet us at Toronto Speaks or send us a message, facebook.com slash Toronto Speaks. And we were just talking about social media too. Yeah. So it's just kind of funny how many different outlets there, there are. Yeah, to keep up with. who knows in a few years from now how it's going to play out, but uh, yeah. it, it's pretty interesting to watch how it's, it's evolved. And, and progressed, yeah. Yeah, uh, and it's been wonderful. Yeah. And it's great for any entrepreneur, I mean, it's like, to help start because you get the word out so quickly. And, For yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, so right before the break, we said we'd talk about what it means to have an organic yes. uh, beer. So what is an organic beer? Uh, an organic beer is one that's made, obviously, pesticide, herbicide-free. Yeah. Uh, it is not, none of the ingredients are genetically modified. Okay. Uh, but it's more than that because it's something that's audited annually. You know, we just, uh, there was a bit of a problem in Canada for a while because there was no governing body. There was lots of little groups who would audit. Uh, but you could create like a box of cereal and say it was organic and there was no one who was going to take you to task for it. Yeah. But that's changed. And the federal government, we were part of the whole lobby to make sure that the food inspection agency had uh, some rules in place and they had teeth and they were going to get enforced so we get as I said audited annually and they come and they make sure that you're doing everything according to the specs and we're very proud of the fact that for example the LCBO yes has used us as a model for when they evaluate organic beers you know and Joel Manning yeah uh, you know he was helping because the rules were unwritten but really what it means is keeping things like the way beer was made 100 years ago, you know, and, uh, you know, and it's hopefully it's reflected in the quality of the product. Well, I've been uh, blessed to have tried it multi on multiple occasions. <laughs> it's yeah. been great. You've got to the... celebrate for winning that. You've got to have one. Yeah, we're going to go out for, I, I feel like we're out for a beer right now. We're having this a is water, conversation. Right? It is water, yes. We do have water in, the, in these mugs. <laughs> so uh, we've got a couple, of, like people have just been sending in Facebook and Twitter messages. So we're going to get to a few of them right now. Okay. Uh, and if you want to reach us, facebook.com slash Toronto Speaks or here on Twitter. Yeah. I, 
I've heard uh, you have a portable solar bar. Is it for sale uh, or just for the brewery? How does it work? <laughs> uh, I actually, someone tweeted me the photo of this earlier it's pretty today cool. as well. Yeah, the guy who tweeted I actually built it. So uh, he's, yeah, a wise oh, he's guy. the builder, yeah. yeah. David Keough. Yeah. Uh, he, he, the lineman is the name of his company. But um, <laughs> when you do a lot of these events, you want to have something unique that stands out because everyone has the same thing. And being a musician, I always love road cases. You know, yeah. you see them when the roadies bring them back and forth. They're also durable and they're made to last. So we work with Clydesdale cases. Uh, Great company, Phil. Yes, Phil. 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 Phil's awesome. Yeah. So you know, Phil. Well, yeah. Phil. Phil built this. Um, really. And yeah. So there, but there is a solar panel that pops out because um, there's a pump, and I didn't want anything that had to plug into the wall. I want to be able to stand in a field and let this thing work. So we figured out using this. It's a solar panel. You're going to get it Canadian Tire or Home Depot, but. David. But you were the first. You, you, I am the that, first. That is innovation. Solar, you talked yes. about innovation. It seriously is that. It's a, it's I great. hope it works. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, you've used it out I've used it once so far, um, and so far running like a dream. Wow. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. You know, it's not going to change the world, but it's certainly, uh, you know, kudos to David for figuring out how to make that happen. It also goes great with all the stuff that you're doing uh, from the turtle ball. Okay, so we also have another uh, Facebook question, I believe, possibly, um, <laughs> popping up. And I, I, I sometimes don't let the control room know that I'm going to do that, so they're, they're on top of it. Um, I've done brewery tours before. Does Mill Street do tours? I'd love uh, to learn the history and taste the samples. So yes. you answered that a little bit earlier, but yes, you do. Yeah, they're, uh, I, I believe the hours are 3 o'clock uh, on the weekday, 4 o'clock on weekends. They might run two. My suggestion is to call ahead. Okay. Uh, 416-759-6565. We'll get that on the website as well. And that's the Mill Street Brew Pub phone number. You call and you can schedule one. If you have a group of people, sometimes they give you a private tour with a brewer. Uh, they're a lot of fun. And you do learn a lot about the history, not only of Mill Street, how beer is made, but the site. Because this place you know, yeah. was the epicenter of distilling, of alcohol production in the British Empire. Yeah. So we're smack in the middle of this place that was, has so much fun history. So. Yeah, I guess you don't really get to walk around. It's it's strictly in uh, Mill Street that you. The production is only in our place. But now that we've but added the, the this tour, new thing, the, the tour, yeah, yeah, the tour is strictly. There in are there. tours that you can take. There's a beer lovers tour that goes between a number of different breweries in Toronto. I believe it's called the Toronto Beer Lovers Tour, and there's one or two others. Uh, and there's also tours, guided tours within the distillery. You can find out different things as well. So there's a number of places. That's cool. So we're going to go. We've got another Facebook question. All you right. guys just keep on sending go them for in. It, yeah. And you're welcome to call us too. Love to hear from you. Um, so, sorry, why do you uh, use bottles instead of clear the brown, bottles, clear bottles uh, instead of the brown bottles or the green ones? Well, uh, I mean, aesthetically, we just realized that uh, the clear bottles, and again, it's only for two brands, mm -hmm. organic lager and stock ale are Flint clear bottles. Everything else is in a brown bottle, amber bottle. I believe what the person was asking uh, was it, it has to do with um, getting skunky. Okay. Uh, light struck is another expression. So if you leave a clear bottle out long enough, it starts changing its flavor. I call it European flavor. You know, yeah, it's a, <laughs> green bottles actually are not so great either. But you know, um, it really does stand out. And we started with clear glass. It's a long story why we started with clear glass. It was also uh, somewhat to do with that was our only choice at the time. Yeah. And it seemed to be working. So uh, we always suggest that you store your bottles in a cool, uh, dark place. So yeah. that's that's part of the trick. Like, don't leave it out too long. But um, it's yeah. So, so storing it, and, and if you go to the, uh, the beer store and return a bottle, do you actually get that bottle back? We do. We have a tremendous return rate, and kudos to the beer store for doing that because uh, I think now our return rate is upwards of 80%. Wow. Yeah, and we sort all our bottles, and be able to forget, ours are painted. Yeah. So we have to make sure that they're all sorted according to brand. And, and they get totally cleaned out, I assume. Totally cleaned That's out. That's original you know. jobs as well. So, yeah. Oh, it's a whole process of uh, you know, quality control, making sure the bottles are washed. Oh, That's crazy. Well, uh, we also have a tech segment in our show. So uh, our resident expert, uh, Andy Walker, is standing by. Andy, what's the latest in the tech world for entrepreneurs? Thanks, Evan. Small business owners are using new affordable advertising tools to market their products or services on the web. 
The problem we all face, however, is that we're not design savvy. You know, finding a web designer to produce amazing web ads at a low cost can be an expensive and time-consuming proposition. But there's a way around it, though. Simply design the ads yourself. Now, before you roll your eyes and laugh at your own art skills, let me introduce you to Banner Snack. It's a do-it-yourself web ad design tool that anyone can use. The tool is web-based, so there's nothing to install. You simply log into the website and you start designing. Now, you can produce any website-sized ad that you want, either standard that the Internet Advertising Bureau set out, or you can custom design ads to your own specs. Bannersnack comes with a huge library of templates for the standard ad sizes. Start with one of those or start from scratch. From there, everything is easy using the drag-and-drop interface that you can import your own logos, your own images, or you can access a built-in library of images in the system. Animated ads are easy to produce, or you can design simple static ads. It's up to you. Exporting the ads is easy as well. You can either generate code for the ad and place it directly on your website, or you can download the ad so you can place it on your website separately. What's nice about the builder is that you can keep an inventory of the ads and adapt them as you go or as an ad campaign evolves. To get started, simply visit bannersnack.com. There's a free version to get you started. And then you can switch to a pay-as-you-go system. You'll simply buy points for tasks you want to achieve. But my preferred method is the premium fee. It costs 14 bucks a month. And with it comes an access to a suite of amazing web tools that you'll really find awesome. My name is Andy Walker. Find out more about me at cyberwalkermedia.com. And thank you so much, Andy. We're back on Toronto Speaks Entrepreneurship. Again, I am joined by Steve Abrams, who's the co-founder of Mill Street Brewery. And it's not too late to hear from you. You can always reach us, 416-446-7090. Tweet us at Toronto Speaks or send us a message on Facebook, facebook.com slash Toronto Speaks. So we're getting towards the end of the show. Um, so just recap, what are some of the latest things for your 10th anniversary that you're, you're doing? Right, so right now we have our spring pack. Yep which is three bottles of our Spring Imp, okay. which is <laughs> the Bach beer, Maybach. And we also have uh, three bottles of our Spring Thaw, which is a maple beer. Really cool. A lot of this whole craft beer movement is about local, you know, interesting ingredients. But in this case, you've got uh, Ontario maple that's infused from eastern Ontario. And also it's smoked you know, using Ontario beech wood. So... There's a lot of interesting local plays in it, and that's, people love that as well. It's delicious. Very cool. We also have another Facebook question that oh. we're going to get to. Um, and that question we are pulling up right now um, is from Asher, who writes, yeah. who had the idea of the coffee beer, and is it still available? The coffee beer. I don't know if we have enough time. We got a lot of funny stories about that one. <laughs> um, love it to death. Uh, you know, people don't drink it as, as much as they should, yeah. but... Um, the idea was initially, uh, well, it was Michael Duggan, who was my original partner, uh, came up with it with uh, another fellow, Paul Dickey, who developed the recipe. Uh, it's changed quite a bit over the years. But when we partnered with, don't forget, we're in the distillery. 